I'm Stone Grissom. Welcome to News 12's Power in Politics. Now, for the first time, voters here in the island and across the state will get to vote uh, nine or ten days before the election. Now, this after lawmakers in Albany approved early voting legislation in January. Joining me now to discuss is Nassau Democratic Elections Commissioner David Guguri and John Ryan, counsel to Nassau Republican Elections Commissioner Louis Savinetti. All right, thanks for uh, joining us this afternoon. Thanks for having us. Um, so, uh, let me, let me, what is this new legislation that was passed? Give us uh, the details. I'll start with you, John. Uh, in terms of the early voting? Yeah, early voting, right. They it's, it's ten days before the election, right. up to ten days before the election. Nine days, nine days before the election, then on election day, right. they'll be voting in Nassau County. And you take that one day before the election day off. Uh, Correct. So you can vote for nine days, you get a little yep. day off, and then, then you have Correct. election day. Mm -hmm. um, uh, th there's some other provisions in that as well. Uh, 16 and 17 year olds can pre-register to vote. Is that is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I mean, um, first of all, if I may, uh, on the first question, uh, we're very pleased uh, from in a bipartisan way, but uh, we had a you know there was a change in, in Albany and in, in leadership there, and, and after waiting many years, we have early voting in, Nas in Nassau County now in New York State. Uh, we're the 38th state to have it. Uh, we feel that it will really allow our voters to be able to vote where they live, work, and play, as we say. Uh, we had agreement where you can vote at any of our 15 sites, uh, which is very convenient. Um, some other jurisdictions are making you be restricted to near where you live, mm -hmm. uh, so this is wide open. And um, although we're very pleased that we had an agreement to go well above the minimum of seven sites to uh, 15 sites, we uh, hold out hope that maybe next year we'll, we'll get to our full complement of 19 sites so we can really cover the entire county. Let me, let me just say on oh that, good. though, uh, maybe. We don't have any empirical data as to whether even 15 sites is too much. Um, seven sites was what the statute allowed as a minimum. We initially thought, okay, let's try the seven sites. Mm -hmm. Economically more realistic and see how it plays. So. Well, let, let me ask you this. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we have both sides uh, representing the Democratic side and the Republican side. Uh, there, why has it taken so long? We're the 38th state to do that, and we've been criticized in the past for having too stringent of voting uh, laws. What has been the holdup in Albany? Well, now you're asking us to divine how things get done, done in Albany. Uh, this has just been an incredibly productive legislative session this year and uh, for the past several uh, there was uh, upwards of 29, I know we don't have time, but 29 uh, election and voting reforms that were voted in. Um, but, um, you know, I can't really give you a solid answer for, for all that was behind it. It was held up in the, in the New York State Senate uh, for many years. It was often passed by the Assembly and uh, held up in the Senate. Okay. D does this have uh, bipartisan support, John, uh, as far as early voting, the idea of doing it? Well, it's the law now. It's the law now, but I mean, do Republicans support this idea that, that we should have early voting? I think uh, conceptually, of course, but in terms of what was actually passed, uh, we really weren't given much choice. It was, you know, take it or leave it. Okay. So now we have to do what they've been asking us to do. And from, from what you're hearing, though, are, they, are, is, is, are the Republicans happy that this is, this is now the law? I know you have to do it, but... Happy? I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't call them happy. I wouldn't... <laughs> they're a going to comply with the law. Okay. You know, <laughs> okay. Who's going to pay for this? Uh, who, who pays for the cost of the extra sites, the, the 15 sites that are going to be implemented? Uh, either one of you. If I may. Yeah. So um, our county executive, Laura Curran, and her team, her budget team, um, you know, took the bull by the horns and, and uh, had meetings in, in a bipartisan way and, and um, uh, got the capital funding lined up um, so that this could be paid for whether the state reimbursed or not. Um, that was voted f through the Nassau County Legislature, which is, you know, Republican-controlled, so we were, we were pleased that that got done um, after her leadership of putting it forward. And uh, thankfully, the state did come through with um, um, close to $1.8 million in reimbursement, uh, most of it for capital expenses for the electronic poll books and the like, uh, but uh, close to $400,000, I believe, to help pay for extra poll inspectors and that kind of thing. So we're getting, you know, a significant, a very significant amount uh, reimbursed. Um, once the money is spent, then the state will reimburse us. Uh, so we're pleased with that. Overall, it's about a $3.7 million capital expense to buy the 3,000 poll books and other equipment that we need to make the voting process uh, convenient and, and uh, speedy and to also make sure 
that no one uh, votes twice. So okay. to answer to answer yeah. your question, the Nassau County taxpayers are paying for this. Okay. <laughs> period. That's right. And uh, the cost is going to be well over five million dollars just for this year. Okay. And it's growing. Okay. That's something. That's something every taxpayer should at least know uh, that uh, we are we're actually paying for that. Um, one of the other pushbacks, and you brought this up, was as far as. Uh, potential voting fraud. That's been a criticism of, of early voting in the past or the idea of implementing that is that people might be able to vote multiple times or even allow non-citizens to vote because it'll be a longer period of time. Uh, are, are there are there safeguards in place to, to stop that or at least alleviate that? Well, I mean, the, 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 the software and the, and the uh, computer uh, equipment are there. Um, it's supposed to work. We haven't tried it yet. <laughs> We will see what happens. I mean, uh, there, there are electronic poll books. You're no longer going to be signing your name physically on a piece of paper. It's going to be written on a screen. Um, I don't know how that technology is going to work, really, quite frankly. This is the first year we're trying it. Okay. From the demos that we've seen, and I've sat in on them personally, and uh, Commissioner Savinetti has been in on many of them as well, my counterpart and his staff. Um, uh, we're very confident that there are securities in place to uh, to not allow that. The electronic poll books speak to each other, so to speak. Uh, within um, a minute or two, we can set it as low as 30 seconds that within an early voting site they would communicate with another poll book so someone could just go to another table and quickly try to vote. The signature requirements that have been traditional in New York will still be in place. Um, Mr. Ryan is absolutely correct. It's going to be a, a a, on on a poll pad, such as when you go to a restaurant now and you would sign, you know, for uh, something uh, when you purchase something. But there is a stylus. We're gonna, you know, uh, people ask people to sign their their names as if they always did. So uh, we we think there's very very little chance, if if any, of any uh, potential voter fraud. Okay, we got about uh, 20 seconds left. Uh, real quick, uh, the 15 sites across Long Island. Uh, I know that New York City's been criticized because it does uh, the sites are are limited in area that might. Uh, be disadvantaged to the uh, less affluent. Has that, was that put in place, uh, at least thought about for these 15 sites to make sure everyone has an equal access? I really think it was. We had a lot of meetings and a good agreement on that and just uh, we did an analysis in anticipation of this question and um, the average walk from a public bus is okay. about three minutes. I hate to cut you off, but that's all the time we have. Thank you so much, both of you gentlemen, for joining us. That's all we have time right now. I'd like to thank David Guggery and uh, John Ryan for stopping by. I'm Stone Grissom.